In this video, we will try to understand the ideas of using the concept of volume and distribution to actually control or influence the half-life of a molecule. While it is great to understand pharmacokinetics, the goal of a drug discovery program is to control pharmacokinetics, to use chemistry to influence the properties of new leads. The two key pharmacokinetic properties of a molecule are volume and distribution and clearance. And these two properties together determine the half-life of a molecule. Is there an ideal half-life? Yes and no. A half-life of around eight hours is often cited as ideal for a once-per-day oral drug, but half-lives even as low as four hours can be found. Once-daily drugs with a shorter half-life need a broader therapeutic window. Let's focus on volume of distribution. Based on the formula for half-life, increasing volume of distribution will increase half-life and decreasing volume of distribution will decrease half-life. What determines volume of distribution? Well, VD is a complex pharmacokinetic parameter and is somewhat difficult to predict and control. The one property that seems to exert the greatest influence on volume of distribution is molecular charge. In general, anions have smaller VD values. Anions often bind to proteins that are found in the plasma, especially albumin. With an affinity for proteins in the plasma, anionic drugs tend to concentrate in the plasma and therefore have lower VD values. Cationic drugs have a positive charge. The positive charge tends to draw the drug to the anionic phosphate groups found on the surface of cell membranes. Cationic drugs, therefore, are drawn out of the plasma to cell surfaces and have a higher volume of distribution. Therefore, addition of a positive charge to a molecule can increase VD. Positively charged functional groups, like amines, can increase volume of distribution. Anionic functional groups, like carboxylic acids, which are deprotonated at biological pH, tend to decrease the volume of distribution of a molecule. Here is an example of adding a charge to a molecule to affect its volume of distribution. We're going to look at calcium channel blockers, and these are uh, blood pressure drugs. So our first molecule is nifedipine. Notice nifedipine has a fairly small volume of distribution, and therefore it has a fairly small half-life. Original formulations in nifedipine had to be taken three times daily to maintain a therapeutic level. So the really short half-life means the drug has to be taken a lot, very frequently. Three times a day is not very convenient. So now if we look on the right, here is amlodipine. Amlodipine has almost the exact same structure except for the addition of this chain and the key functional group is this amine. This amine will be protonated at biological pH. With the positive charge, VD increases dramatically from 0.79 liters per kilogram to 17 liters per kilogram. Also, half-life increases as well. Amlodipine has a much longer half-life and therefore is easily dosed once per day. We've now talked a little more about not just the theory behind something like volume and distribution, but how we can change the structure of a molecule to influence volume and distribution and therefore change the half-life of a drug.